When we're first starting out with photography, especially when we're trying out new techniques and new photo styles, um, we might end up buying equipment which is cheaper than what we really want. Unfortunately, this tends to um, show in our results, especially when we're using, for example, um, filters and the filters which are on the cheaper end. And that is what I actually did back in 2018 when I started experimenting with long exposure photography and I ended with very, very bad results. This was all due to very bad products purchased in the first place. And after five whole years of completely um, discarding these photos, I actually stumbled upon a technique which can literally fix these color shifts that are created by, by very cheap ND filters. And thank God for that, because I can now show you how you can fix any photos which have been taken with either bad ND filters, which have really bad color shifts or which have been taken with the wrong uh, white balance. So let's get right into it and see how we can fix those photos. Okay, so as always, I've imported the image that I would like to work with today. And this is um, an image that I took in New Zealand in Lake Tarawera. And uh, I've tried to edit this photo before. However, I never uh, actually managed to achieve a really nice result. And I actually discarded it for a number of years. And today I would like to revisit it to take a look at how we can fix this kind of color shift, these um, magenta hues that are um, sort of taking over the whole, the whole scene, basically. So, um, in order to, to fix this kind of color shift, uh, we really need to work with the calibration panel. Now, the calibration panel is a panel which I haven't spoken about in any of my videos before, um, but I actually mentioned it in my very first video where I basically went through the different panels that Lightroom Classic has. Now, the calibration panel allows us to, first and foremost, um, shift the tint either towards the green or towards the magenta, and then it also allows us to calibrate the primary colors, which are red, green, and blue. So let's take a look at how we can fix this kind of color shift with, with the calibration panel. So first and foremost, I will uh, play around with the tint and move it towards the green because I have a magenta looking photo. So I'm going to move it towards the green and immediately you can see that the magenta in the midtones and in the shadows has reduced quite a lot. Then we can shift the red hue towards the orange to reduce that hue once again, that red hue once again, we will shift the greens towards the uh, light green or yellow in this case. And we will also shift the dark blues towards lighter blues in order to gain uh, a more natural looking scene. We can also play around with the saturation of um, the colors here. And I think the blues need to be slightly more saturated than, than what the original photo was. And then after doing this, which is already much better than what we started with, we can go ahead and um, basically correct the white balance of our photo. And to correct the white balance of our photo, my only real white uh, color in this image would be the cloud. So I'm going to click on the clouds. And as you can see, the photo has shifted immediately towards the blue and the greens. Now, after doing this, we can go back to the calibration panel to refine our calibration. And I would say moving the blue towards the darker blues makes the image look much more natural. After we've done this, so we basically have a much more natural look and a much more um, sort of balanced color, um, we can immediately go ahead and edit our photo as we would with any other photo. So first and foremost, I'm going to straighten the image, enable profile correction, increase some vignette. I'm going to increase some manual vignette as well. Then I'm going to go ahead and start editing my photo as I normally would with any other photo. So. Decreasing the blacks, 
decreasing the highlights making sure that my shadows are dark enough enabling a nice S curve right here for bright highlights and dark shadows and then I can also play around with the hues of my colors right here so in the color mixer panel we can play around with um, the colors for example right here on the wooden areas where it seems that there's a slight color shift towards the green and I would like to change that to make the colors a bit warmer we can also move the blue slider slightly towards darker blue and the aqua slider as well and we can even play around with the saturation of each right here I'm going to start um, doing some local adjustments and uh, I'm going to start off by trying to mimic a better long exposure so this was uh, an attempt at a, at a long exposure right here and in order to create a better looking long exposure effect in the in the river itself I'm going to um, intersect this mask with the subject the subject would be the peer and my wife in this case and I'm going to invert that mask um, then I'm going to reduce the clarity and reduce texture by a bit I'm going to reduce the temperature in order to retain the blue tones and then reduce the blacks and also the exposure let's make sure to keep it as balanced as we can we can use the curves right here to keep it balanced so I think this works better than what we had originally now I'm going to create yet another linear gradient at the top feather it quite a bit reduce the exposure and the blacks and I'm going to duplicate this mask turn it around and use it right here at the bottom in order to create an effect where your eyes um, sort of move towards the subject so I'm going to create another mask this time I'm going to select the sky and I'm going to make my sky slightly more dramatic I can even play around with the temperature to increase um, the temperature a bit right there and then I'm going to create yet another linear gradient mask I'm going to go over uh, all of my background and I'm going to intersect that mask with my sky and invert it in order to select only the mountain range behind my subject and right there the mountain range um, needs a bit of both a bit of contrast so I'm going once again to use a nice S curve to darken my shadows and lighten my highlights in that area and we can also play around with the temperature and tint in order to bring out the natural colors of the green the greenery in that area we can even reduce the haze by a little bit and increase the texture in order to create a more dreamy effect and separate uh, this this part of the photo from the part behind it one final mask is to create a mask on the subject uh, we can even subtract this area right here we can remove it easily with the brush tool and now we can edit this area a bit more make sure that we have correct colors and one other thing we need right here is to bring out more light more sunlight from this top left corner so i'm going to create a radial gradient which hovers slightly over our landscape and this time i'm going to add a bit of yellow temperature i'm going to increase the exposure and i'm going to play around with the s curve in order to retain my shadows as dark as possible and I'm going to put in some negative dehaze to mimic sort of a dreamy light coming in from the side one final thing we can do is make sure to sharpen 
our image to retain some detail. Let's compare the before and after and we've certainly gone from a, an image which had a, a bit of horrendous color shift to a properly balanced uh, photo, properly balanced colors in this photo um, and it looks quite a lot better than what we started with and I think this is much more usable than the original photo. So I certainly hope that these tips were useful for you and that you can fix your photos if you were like me once and you maybe invested in the wrong equipment or you shot um, with wrong settings and created photos that had really bad color shifts. I really hope that you can fix them using these techniques. As always, thank you for watching and please make sure to like and subscribe to watch my next videos.